My story begins with an old diary, a weathered, fragile book. The diary belonged to a young man from Tennessee fighting for his country on a continent near the edge of collapse. Its owner, my father, passed away years earlier. Since then, the diary remained tucked away with other mementos from his service in World War II. He had served with distinction. Master Sergeant Roddy Edmonds of the 106th Infantry was captured in the Battle of the Bulge and spent 100 days in a harsh German POW camp toward the end of the war. This was the story our family knew, the totality of his service. Service he never talked about. While reading Dad's diary one evening, many years after his passing, his words touched my heart. In it, Dad wrote a lot of things I'm not going to write because they're not exactly nice to talk about. I know God was with us, and he answered our prayers. I learned men even better than before. Some were good, some were bad. Some were better, some were worse. The diary inspired me to look further into Dad's service and to uncover the true story of his time as a prisoner of war. Dad was the highest ranking American soldier in Stalag 9A, a POW camp near Zagenhain, Germany. It was near the end of the war, late January 1945. The Nazis had strict anti-Jew policies in the POW camps, segregating Jewish POWs from non-Jews, sending them to certain death in labor camps. American Jewish soldiers were told if they fell into enemy hands to destroy their dog tags and any mention of their Jewish identity. Late one evening, German officers ordered that only Jewish soldiers were to report outside for the next morning's roll call. Without hesitation, my dad turned to his men and said, we're not doing that. Tomorrow, we all fall out. It was bitterly cold that morning, January 27, 1945. As the Nazi commander approached, he couldn't believe his eyes. All of the Americans, more than 1,200 soldiers, were lined up in sharp formation. The German major turned to my father, and he angrily said, they cannot all be Jews. To which my father declared, we are all Jews here. The Nazi officer lunged forward and pressed his pistol hard into my dad's head. One last chance, Sergeant. You will order the Jewish prisoners to step forward or I will shoot you right now. By this time, dad had seen untold horrors. Brutal battle, a death march, bombing while imprisoned in a boxcar, 40 days of starvation, being beaten, stripped of his dignity, humiliated. Just two days earlier, witnessing a savage execution and being told the same would happen to him and all who disobeyed Nazi orders. Yet he stood strong, fearless, resolute. My dad said quietly, if you shoot me, you will have to kill all of us because we know who you are and you'll be tried for war crimes when we win this war and you will pay. The Nazi blanched. Suddenly and without warning, he lowered his gun and walked away. Dad saved the lives of nearly 200 Jewish soldiers that day. (laughs) 
Earlier this year, Israel's Holocaust Museum in Yad Vashem, and the nation of Israel honored my father as one of the righteous among the nations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. As you know, Righteous Among the Nations is the highest honor given to non-Jews who rescued their lives to protect Jews during the Holocaust. The ceremony was hosted by Ambassador Dermer and attended by President Obama. It was held at the Israeli Embassy here in Washington on January 27, 2016, exactly 71 years to the day after that fateful morning in the POW camp. My dad is only the fifth American and the first U.S. serviceman to receive the award. And the first recognized for protecting American Jews. Now, I think he deserves the Congressional Medal of Honor. How about you? Send a letter to your congressman. <laughs> I'm proud of my dad, proud of the heroic decisions he made and the righteous life he led. I'm so blessed to have learned his story, but more blessed to have met some of the men and the families he saved. Skip Friedman, Ohio, Paul Stern of Virginia, Hank Friedman of Georgia, and joining us today are Lester Tanner of New York and Sonny Fox of California. These men, their children, grandchildren, and even great-grandchildren, they are my dad's legacy. As an APAC activist, I see my work with APAC as a vital part of continuing my dad's legacy. I'm blessed to have APAC members and all of you as family. We're a family committed to a strong America and a safe and secure homeland for the Jewish people, something I know Dad would be thrilled about. <laughs> thrilled because we fight for what is good and stand for what is right. <laughs> Thank you, APAC, for letting me share Dad's story and for giving me a voice within the pro-Israel community. May God richly bless each of you, the state of Israel, and the United States of America. God bless you. Mm -hmm.